My name is Jack Kirby with Vista Solutions, and today we're going to talk about in manufacturing how do you set up products and bill of materials. We're going to talk about the questions that managers ask when setting up products and bill of materials. We're going to look at a workflow diagram of how the product template is set up. We're going to walk through an example of creating a main manufactured product, and we're going to answer some questions using the analysis. So, when managers are getting ready to set up their products, a few questions that they ask are, how do I correctly set up products? How do I set up a bill of materials? What are the costs of my materials? And how can I better set prices? So, the first place that I want to start is a workflow diagram. So, on a product template, and I can take an example right here, I've got my 100 gallon smoker. I have a number of things that need to be set before I can correctly create this 100 gallon smoker. So, for example, I need to set my taxes. And in Odoo, those taxes are set in accounting. So if I go to accounting, I go to taxes, I go to my sales, I can see right here the accounts that are attached to those taxes. And setting up your taxes is one of the components that you'll need in order to correctly set the right taxes on your product template. Similarly, the product category, which also contains many of my accounts, my income account, my expense account, all of my stock accounts, the stock journal that those entries are going to be kept in, my costing method, all of these items need to be set up so that I can set the product category on my product and the accounting for that product category and the um, costing methods will be correct. Okay, so we can see that all of these accounts flow into my product category, which flows into my product template. Similarly, I can set put away rules on the product category that will apply to all products in that category. Okay, and you can see that we really want to set this up moving from left to right. We want to set up the base objects first, and really the product template is, you know, one of the last things that I set up after I have these precursors organized. The next thing we can take a look at is the bill of materials. And we can see that this bill of materials has raw components, and that raw component can contain a subassembly. So this trailer mount that's part of the 100 gallon smoker also has its own bill of materials. And that bill of materials has its own products, its own raw components. So it's important, again, moving from left to right, I want to set up the subassemblies, their bill of materials, and all the raw components before I use that subassembly on the bill of materials. Similarly, I want to set up all the other raw materials used for my main products before I set up that product, really. So you really want to move you know, left to right, build your products from the base materials up, um, rather than you know, immediately jumping to that final product and trying to work backwards. In addition, a bill of materials has work has operations, and those operations are performed at work centers. So similarly, I want to go to my manufacturing, and I want to set up my work centers, cut, weld, assembly, burn in. I want to set up these before I set up my operations, and before I set up those operations on a bill of materials. Okay? So again, we're following the philosophy of starting from the bottom and building up towards my main products. A few other things that we'll need to set is we'll need to set our operations. So this is uh, basically how this product is going to move through the system. I can quickly view the diagram and you can see routes that we can set and on this 100 gallon smoker, we're going to manufacture it and we're going to replenish when I have a sales order. If I were looking at a product that can be purchased like this door counterweight, 
For this, instead of my route being manufacturer, it would be buy, and I'm still replenishing on order, but I have to set a vendor and a price, okay? So we have the route that it's gonna take, whether it's going to be um, a uh, manufactured or buy product. Then I have my reordering rules and my purchase rules. So these two types of rules are, are slightly different. They're all part of replenishment, okay? But my reorder rule says, when am I going to buy this product? And my purchase rules say, who am I going to buy it from? So if we just take a look at this door counterweight, my min-max rules, these are my replenishment rules. This says I'm going to buy when I have a minimum of 10, and I'm going to buy up to the quantity of 50, and I'm going to buy those in packs of 10, okay? That is when I'm going to order, but I also need to set my vendor rules of who I'm going to order from. And here I can see I'm going to order from um, Ace Hardware. They can have a you know quantity minimum. They can have a price associated with it. So you need to set really both. Uh, these min-max order rules won't know who to order from unless I also set the vendor, okay? Which means, again, we want to set the vendor. If we have any prices associated with that vendor, we need to set those. And then we build up to our purchase rules and our reorder rules. Okay, all flowing into the product template. So let's go ahead and uh, do an example. Let's go ahead and create, uh, I'm gonna create a 100 gallon max smoker. It can be sold, but it cannot be purchased. It is a storable product, which means I'm going to keep it in inventory and count the number that I have. I'm going to make it part of this 100 gallon smoker product category, because it's a version of, of the smoker. In inventory, I can't buy that, but I am going to manufacture and replenish that on order. If I had to do shipping, I would want to, if I paid for shipping and wanted to tie that to a shipping uh, company, I would have to set the weight and potentially volume. I'm going to go ahead and set the manufactured lead time at five days, and I, on average, it takes three days to deliver, so I'm going to set the customer lead time at eight days. If I had a tax code and was tying into a third-party tax system like TaxCloud, I would have to set the HS code here, okay? I'm going to track it by unique serial number, and here I can add any descriptions that I need. Now I'm going to set the bill of materials. So we're going to go in and we're going to create a new bill of materials for this 100-gallon max smoker. You typically on items like this, you, you always want to use a quantity of one as the unit. Your components are in the ratio that will generate one unit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add some components. So I'm going to search and I'm going to group by product category. And I can see all my raw materials right here. So I'm just going to add some of those raw materials. Okay. So I've added some additional materials and some given them some quantities. And then finally, I'm going to add a subassembly, which is my 100 gallon trailer mount. And this is the same subassembly that I use for my other 100 gallon smoker. And then I'm going to go ahead and set some operations for this. So let's go ahead and add um, my operation. And I'm going to say 100 gallon max smoker weld cut. My, we my work center is going to be uh, saw station one and the duration is going to be 80 minutes. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and set a few more. And now for my components, once I've added my operations, I'm going to go ahead and uh, determine which operation those are consumed in. So once I've set all of my consumed in operations, I can save. And now I have the bill of materials for this product. Once I've set the bill of materials, I can take a look at the structure and cost. And because I have set this from the bottom up, I've set my raw materials, my sub-assemblies before my bill of materials, I can take a look at the structure and cost. And that is very useful because I'm going to go here back to my the 100 gallon max smoker and I'm going to compute the price from the bill of materials. It's going to use those costs that were determined in those bill of materials and update the cost of this 100 gallon max smoker. Finally, I want to set a sales price. Now, 
instead of just setting a round sales price and saying this is going to be $2,000, um, I want to set this price based on some margins. Okay, I am going to go to my sales app. I am going to go to price lists and I'm going to look at my public price list and I'm going to create a price rule. Okay, so here we're answering the question, how can I better set prices? So in my price list, I want to create a new price rule. I want to say that on this 100 gallon max smoker, I want to always have a minimum margin. We're going to set a cost plus model here. So we're going to say the cost of that product, the bill of materials cost that we just set based on the raw materials for that product. I am going to take that cost. I'm going to add 50% to that cost for a total of 150% of cost. And that will give me a 33% price margin. I'm going to set a rounding method. So I want it to be in increments of $10. And I'm going to go ahead and subtract a penny and make it a 99. Okay, I could set a min or max margin of a uh, fixed dollar amount, min and max margin, but I'm not going to do that for this product. Okay, I could also set a minimum quantity. I could give a discount uh, based on uh, how many people are ordering. Okay, so let's go ahead and save. So now if I go to sales, I can create a sale. I'm going to sell it again to Franklin's Barbecue. I'm going to set the price list as the public price list, and I'm going to add my 100 gallon max smoker. And here we see Odoo is automatically calculating a unit price of $2,749.99. We didn't set that on the product. We let Odoo do the work by taking our cost from our bill of materials, adding a fixed margin, guaranteeing me a margin of 33%, and getting us a nice round price that the customer will like. Okay? And then I can go ahead and confirm and that'll generate the manufacturing order. And we can go to the manufacturing order and see all of those parts that we just put. And because we started from the bottom up and we set those prices, on, or we set up those parts, I can see my availability right here. So setting up products, I can set them up starting from the bottom up. I can set my bill of materials by first creating my work centers and then building up to my operations. I can find out the cost if I've set up my raw components and my sub assemblies first and I can use price lists to guarantee margins so that I'm never uh, selling a product below the margins that I um, that my business requires. So I hope that was useful. If you want to talk about setting up your manufacturing in Odoo, please reach out to Bista Sales and I will see you guys next time.